It's time for another episode of Sudbury Politics, the show featuring your hosts, Jeff McIntyre, Rachel Adrians, and Richard Everhart, bringing you analysis on the political news of the day from a Sudbury perspective. It's January 2021, and we were told by our mayor not to talk about the KED, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy another episode of Sudbury Politics, the show. Welcome back, everybody, to Sudbury Politics, the show. It's 2021, and politics around the North and around the world has heated up. Uh, so we're back with our regular scheduled program. Uh, Richard, Rachel, good to see you guys. Uh, Richard, what's happening? Hey there, Jeff. Oh, you know, not much at all. Just, uh, just got a brand new president in the United States. We just uh, have a conservative party that's sort of slowly imploding along with the Republican Party in the U.S., um, and uh, right here at home, there's a bit of a, an earthquake um, at the council meeting uh, Wednesday um, when they, uh, they're, they're going to review all the details of the kit. Now, we heard this first, um, and I know uh, we've talked a lot about it, uh, the three of us together. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the council, if you missed this, the council had a regular session, what was it, a couple weeks ago. And uh, they didn't come out of closed session the whole time. They came out of closed session uh, with one instruction from the mayor to basically the whole city. Shut up. Stop talking about the Ked. We're not going to talk about it anymore. What we're going to do instead is we're going to get a staff report that's going to uh, lay out all of the facts and look at everything. Um, and we didn't know what that meant, did we? Um, so we, we um, why don't we, why don't we, why don't, what, what's that, Jeff? We were in council. So yeah. we didn't know. Because was that just the Ked? Just let's use this. As, it was either an opportunity to clear the slate of all of the, the negative momentum that the Ked project has had lately, um, or it was an opportunity to bring in and give new and a rejuvenated life to some of these other ideas, um, like Project Now, using the downtown arena, whatever. Um, so tonight uh, at council, or uh, Wednesday night, I should say, at council, um, we got a report or a proposal to look at basically any of the, of the competing ideas around uh, building an event center. The mayor's language was really interesting, um, that it's like we all agree we want to build an event center. That's what we agree on. And... Uh, it was interesting. Um, while there was, it, we could take a roll call, there was no vote, but it was pretty clear uh, based on who was happy about this and who was mad about this, uh, what this means for the kid. Rachel, did you watch that meeting as well? What did you take away? Bits and pieces. <laughs> I'm, uh, I honestly think that I, there's just so much kid that's been going on, like, in the background, the noise for so long that even a geek like me, I'm having trouble at times tuning into every little bit. But um, yeah, it, it was interesting. I think, um, you know, I've been following this for a couple of years. Geez, yeah, because that's how long it's been. Um, you know, when I was in clerks, when the original, you know, public hearings were going on. So I sat through all of those. And now, you know, sometimes the conversations that I'm hearing now, they sound a little too familiar. <laughs> I feel like we haven't, you know, we're kind of back again to reevaluating, you know, some of these other options. And I guess politically, like, I find it interesting now because it seems that some of the, you know, people around the council table are starting to kind of take a new position on the KED and, and try and push things in a different direction. Um, like who? So, who? Who's moved? Well, so that's what I was going to say, like not following it obviously as specifically. Um, but, you know, I think like if I recall, um, Cormier and McIntosh perhaps were more on board initially in the beginning. If I'm right there, Jeff, you can correct me if I'm not. Um, yeah. It's like now there's the discussions about, you know, like this is just wasteful, like let's reconsider. So maybe you can kind of as our resident uh, number one Ked fan or, or not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I, I wasn't a big fan of the Ked uh, 
in, in 2017. Uh, I was I was kind of opposed to it. And uh, so I've had quite a few discussions about it over the years. And I, I can tell you over the last year, the conversations I have with people are, are, are severely different. And and the reality of that project has, has changed a lot. Um, the, the one thing is, if you ever want to read the, the report that they voted on uh, to decide on that project, um, it really, in a 2020 light, it's not the same report. Um, it, it, it's, the KED was for a long-term hope of economic development. Um, and, and that's really reiterated heavily through the report. But there's very little hope for any short-term or medium-term economic development based on, on this event center being built there. And anywhere that they built one of these things, that economic development usually comes 20, 30 years down the line. And a lot of the counselors that voted for this, that was what they said. You know, this is about the long term. This is a long term play. And that was the game. It's hard to make that argument today. Um, it, our community is hurting. Um, every small business in this community hurts. And to make that project successful based on the plan and based on everything that, that they've said, um, it needs a significant commercial development around it. And everything that's happened in the last little while tells us that's not a good thing for our community. Um, we, we, we're going to have a surplus of commercial space in this city. Um, that's a sad reality of coming into this uh, COVID recession. Um, and on top of that, e-commerce has gone through the roof. Um, the e-commerce usage of individuals in this community from Instacart to Amazon, um, you know, and some of these are locally based things. It, it's hard to find a local business that doesn't have an e-commerce platform now. Um, and all of those things mean you need less square footage to operate commercial. Um, office buildings and, and regular commercial buildings are looking at, you know, how often can people work from home? Do we need the same footprint? And, and lease space that we used to have. So we're gonna have a hard time filling that space. So to go out and say, we're gonna build an entire new district now um, at a time where small businesses are hurting, it, it's a hard, hard sale for people. And I think with the 2020 glasses on uh, and the 2021 glasses on, it becomes hard to look at that project and say, yeah, the, today this is a good idea. So. And, what, and, and you could see that, Jeff, if I can just throw in there, because I, I was watching it very closely. And really what it comes right down to is, is that council's been operating on a 6-6 six -six split uh, for a long time on the uh, it We got here in the first place because of a 6-6 six -six tie on whether or not we wanted to build the event center downtown in the first place. Um, so we didn't mention it too much, but back in December, there was a 6-6 six -six vote uh, because the mayor wasn't around um, on whether or not to explore this new idea of Project Now, which is a rebuild of the old. Uh, I can tell you, based on what we heard tonight, that vote would have come out very differently. Um, the, it seems like the mayor, uh, uh, Councillor McCausland, God bless him, uh, thanked the mayor for his leadership on this issue. I would call it a newfound leadership on this issue. I think Jeff is being uh, pretty uh, generous, but um, where where council was split in half, I'm, it looked more like nine to twelve uh, of the councilors were looking for better information. Um, I don't know. You've got the head count maybe a little better. Could be could have been eight eight to four um, versus nine to three. But if it came to a vote and it didn't, the mayor just Mayor just issued this directive to staff to come back with this framework for a report. It's going to come back, what, February 9th? And then there might be a vote on this framework, but it's clear. They're looking at options. They're using COVID uh, as the reason to look for options. Um, and, you know, on this show, what, back in December of 2019, I said the KED would be dead by now. It's, it's not dead. Uh, but it's awful close. Um, yeah, and I think as well too, like 
we're obviously talking specifically about the CAD right now, but council, you know, tonight they were talking, or sorry, Wednesday, they're talking a lot about um, all of the other large projects as well. Like it's not just, we're talking about COVID and, you know, reassessing what the city's long-term plans were. And I think it's this huge, big picture that now needs to be adjusted. So the impacts go greater than the CED um, in terms of the projects. Yeah, it, well, it, I don't think it's really realistic to say they're using COVID. I, like, I, I think it's pretty legitimate to say that COVID is the biggest... Oh, Legitimately changes the game, sure. Yeah, legitimately changes the game. This is the biggest economic hit our country's had since the Second World War. Um, you know, the deficit spending that, that's been required, everything. We have not seen anything like that since the Second World War. Um, th this is a massive, massive blow to uh, businesses across our country. Um, massively impacted the opioid crisis. It, it, it really has changed um the way the world will function going forward um and, and i do think we'll get back to normal conversations and doing things but we also learned a lot of skill sets during covid that aren't going to disappear zoom calls aren't going anywhere right uh you might have a lot more in-person meetings when things get back to normal but if, some, if you got to talk to somebody in north bay you're going to do it yeah right you're not going to you're going to do it over Zoom. You're not going to drive there. Um, so th there is significance to the way that the world's going to function based on this, and it's time to um, to be realistic about that. Well, and and there was conversation tonight, and it was reiterated several times by councillors about the financial position that Gateway Casinos is in. Guess what? COVID reality, the transition to electronic versus in-person casino gaming is part of the process. And again, where is this hotel operator? A couple of counselors that said basically that same thing. Is there a hotel operator? What, who are they? What, what organization is it? Where's the agreement? Um, and uh, listen, I can tell you, I, I, work, I work with hospitality workers. Uh, the hospitality industry is in big trouble. So you're not building a new hotel today. I don't care what Bob Kerwin says. You're not building a new hotel today, next year or the year after that. Uh, and Gateway Casinos isn't going to stick, stick its head up out of the ground. Um, so the question is, do you want to wait on this project for two, three, four years until all these stars are aligned? Or uh, is there enough momentum now to change direction? And what will the people say about it? Uh, my last comment on this is I think Brian Bigger just announced tonight that he's not running for mayor. Again. I think this is the beginning of the end of his mayoralty. Uh, because he built his brand along with the KED. He won the last election on that. And if the, there's not an event center built, the next election is going to be fought on it too. Uh, and and flip-flopping the way he did tonight, which I see it as a flip-flop, is the end of his uh, mayoral career. I, I got to argue with the flip-flop. Like, as much as, as, much as my heart is, is downtown and, and I like to see people come over, um, the, conver the, the people that... Are, are looking at changing their opinion on this, aren't doing it because they love moving over to the downtown. They're doing it because the world is intimately changed. Um, and, and quite frankly, if they switch to downtown, that event center could be half built by the next election. They have the money in the bank. They have the money in the bank. They own the land. Uh, they could put an RFP out in March and uh, begin construction uh, in spring of uh, 2022. Well, there you go. Last word from Jeff McIntyre, why it's a good idea to build downtown and abandon the CAD. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. What ha what's happening next? February 9th, there's a preliminary report back to council. So we'll be watching. Yeah, we'll see how dead it is. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now share your thoughts. Go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Sudbury Politics. Let us know what you think. We have a poll up on this week's episode. Please vote. Share with your friends. Let us know what you think. And we hope you join us again for Sudbury Politics, the show.